we're doing a thousand hour service on this M series. This is a uh, S740, but we're about to service the hydraulic system. So I thought I'd take you along with me and show you how I do a full hydraulic flush and change the filters. So let's get right to it. Now, Bobcat suggests the way you drain the hydraulic system is to remove this side cover right here. And we're gonna pull a small drain hose off of the, um, the fan motor, which is the case drain for the fan motor that goes back to tanks. So when you disconnect it from the fan motor, we'll pull this small tube out and we'll put it into a drain pan and let it drain. Well, draining out of that little hose just takes too long. Really the best way to get the oil out of this machine is to pump it out. And the machine is a giant pump. So either we can suck it out of the reservoir, which we won't get as much oil out, or we can pump it out of the auxiliaries. And this is my preferred method is to, you know, turn the machine on and use the hydraulic uh, pump to pump oil out of the hyd uh, auxiliary port. So I just made up a hose that hooks right into the aux port, put that into my drain pan, and we'll start the machine, turn on the auxiliaries, pump the oil out. What you do need to know is that this is a controversial way of doing it. Um, I've been doing it this way since 1999, I guess, is when I started working on these smaller machines, and I've always pumped the oil out of the auxiliaries. Never had an issue, okay? One guy's gonna recommend you pump it out like this. The next guy's gonna tell you that you're cavitating your pumps and you're gonna damage your pumps. When he says you're cavitating your pump, ask him to define cavitation, hydraulic cavitation for you, and see if he can, because obviously, he, He's not telling you wrong, but he obviously doesn't understand how a pump cavitates. Cavitation, hydraulic cavitation, which we can go into that later, is a vacuum. It's a, it's a void. It's the pump trying to pull negative pressure, which creates um, air bubbles, essentially, or it, it, not really even air bubbles. It vaporizes the oil to a point where when those little bubbles, um, the vaporization explode, they're kind of an ultrasonic explosion. It takes out pieces of metal to your pump. Anyways, we can go into that later. What you need to know is when your pump runs out of oil, you're not cavitating it, okay? You're aerating the oil, which, which is two different things. Now, not all the oil is going out, so you've still got plenty of oil in there to lubricate your pumps, you know, until you get the machine shut off. We're just gonna pump oil out until we see it get a little foamy. Then we know that our tank has been completely flushed out. We're gonna shut the machine off, fill the tank back up, or we're gonna change our main hydraulic filter, and then we're gonna fill the tank back up this machine has 8,000 hours on it. This is the eighth time I've done this process to do it. Never had a single hydraulic issue with this machine. So without further ado, let's pump the oil out. So I just start the machine up, turn on the auxiliary, and I'm gonna use my paddle switch to start pumping oil out. Right now it's running out of the hose. You know, I can control how fast I want it because this is a proportional switch. So I just barely get it pumping out. We're gonna pump out about three and a half, four gallons of oil out of this system using this method, where you're only gonna get about two, maybe two and a half gallons out if you try to uh, suck it out of the reservoir itself. So now I'm starting to kind of gurgle and pump, you know, bubbles out. So that's all I need to do. That's about three gallons. Shut the machine off. Your pumps are gonna be perfectly fine. I guarantee it. Like I said, it's highly controversial. I've talked to many hydraulic experts through all my classes, you know, the trainers and all, and we've, we've discussed this very topic. Is there a difference between cavitation and aeration? And yeah, there, there, there's a huge difference. Without the presence of oil, you cannot have cavitation. Simple as that. So that's how we drain all the oil out of the system. Now we can go change our uh, main hydrostatic oil filter. So this is where we're gonna find our main hydrostatic oil filter right here. And th this is our uh, hydraulic tank and cap. That's where we will fill it from. So I just like to lay down a little layer of protection because I'm probably gonna spill a few, just a little bit of hydraulic oil when I pull that filter out. So I just put that down. And what we're gonna do is using a 9 16 we got to pull these bolts out 
of the cap. Now, these, these caps can be difficult to get off. There's no good way to do it. Um, I just like to kind of work them off with a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver, just wherever you can kind of find a little spot. It is possible to break these caps, so if you, you know, if you were able to uh, get a new cap, might not be a bad idea. This one's popping right out, which is good news. Now, I like to put my drain pan up here so I can just put the filter, just lift it straight up and put it into the drain pan. So I slowly lift it up. Throw it into the drain pan. So you can see that the filter kind of snaps into the cap. It may or may not hold. You know, you may pull the cap out and the filter down in there, you just pull the filter out afterwards. And recently this year, they have got a new design for the cap and filter. In this filter, you can see this neck is slanted and it'll only work with a new cap. This one has the new cap on it, so I don't have to replace it, but I am going to inspect it. And when you buy a new filter, if you've already got the new cap, the filter comes with new O-rings. So we're going to replace these O-rings. And, um, you know, that way we, we know that we've got a good seal when we bolt this cap back on. So just check with your dealer because some machines have changed and some hasn't. You know, you if you just buy a filter, you know, you might have the wrong cap for your machines. Just something to take note of. I'm going to change out these uh, O-rings real quick, slide the new filter in, and then put the cap back on. So now that I've got new O-rings on the cap, I've got the new filter attached to the cap, it's just held in with an o-ring it just you know slides right in but there's only goes one way you know you have to kind of line it up there and then we just lower the cap back down as far as we can and what we'll do is you know, you really don't want to hit on the top. I mean, if you take a rubber mallet and hit on the top to get the cap to go down to seat those O-rings, I mean, I guess that's okay, but Bobcat actually recommends doing it this way. Um, put the bolts in, and then this is directly out of your service manual, and then we're going to just tighten each side just a little bit at a time until the cap pulls down into the housing itself. And that's how you change the main hydrostatic filter. And to continue with our hydraulic service, we got a fan filter that we've got to change. It's the hydraulic charge filter on the fan housing. And to access that on this machine, not all machines, but this machine, we are gonna to have to raise the cab, which I've already unbolted. Unfortunately, this cab is so heavy, it's got a forestry package on it that I'm gonna to have to use my crane to lift it up because one of the shocks have obviously gone bad. I couldn't lift it by hand, so with our crane, we'll get it lifted up, locked out. Again, safety's number one priority. I've got the arms up and I've got the boom lock installed. Not only do I have a lock on the cab here that'll protect it, I've also got my crane on it up above because the cab is heavy. So now that I know I'm safe, I'm going to, uh, we gotta remove this cover. Just got some rubber latches here that we gotta remove. And I need to get this wiring harness out of the way that's held on with a couple zip ties. So I just have to cut the zip ties in this case and it's not uncommon. I just have some new zip ties that we'll put on there. And then there's another rubber strap right here in the middle way underneath. And now we can get this cover out of the way.
So I tuck my drain pan under here because quite a bit of oil is going to leak out of this filter. I like to pour the filter out in a clean area of the pan and just look for any sign of metal or brass that would come out of there and that actually looks really clean. I'm just going to clean up the surface area of this filter housing because there is some dust on there. Now you could have a cartridge style filter as well where you have to remove a, uh, a housing to put in a cartridge filter. Um, that was kind of the earlier M series and even the uh, K series I believe had those. Um, but this is a spin on style filter which will be the latest style that you would encounter. So that's how we do the charge filter and 500 hours and a thousand hours is where you want to change this filter now thousand hours is of course like we talked about we're going to do the entire hydraulic system but um, 500 hours you just want to spin a filter off put a new one on and top off the hydraulic oil so now i'm just going to sign date this filter put the machine back together and we'll continue servicing the hydraulic system Well, I actually just got another machine with, with the hydraulic filter that comes in from the side. So where we just lifted the cab and did it from underneath, this one we can do from the side. So let's take a look at how we do that. We got this side cover right here that we can remove. And that's gonna give us access to our filter. And what I like to do is take a one gallon oil drain pan and I, I, I make or I cut it out to make a drain pan out of it. And you see, I come down to this seam a little bit so it'll just slide right in underneath that filter. Because when we spin it off, we lose, you know, quite a bit of oil. And, and to keep from making a mess, this, is, this, this fits perfectly under there. Let me show you what I mean. So we can see the filter right there. And this drain pan will slide just right underneath it, just like that. screw on our new filter snug that up and then we can remove our drain pan sign and date the filter put our screen back on and that's all there is to doing the fan filter on the uh, ones that come in from the side much easier to do so Let's get back onto the uh, the other machine. So I just removed the hydraulic breather cap, and this is where I'm going to fill up the hydraulic oil. And there there should be a rubber gasket here. I noticed there's not one, and it's actually recommended to replace this cap. I believe it every 500 hours anyway. So I'm going to put a new uh, cap and new O-ring gasket on there. This one was missing; it wasn't leaking, but um, there is supposed to be one there. Then we'll get this hydraulic reservoir filled up. We're going to start run the machine, bleed all the air out of it, and recheck the hydraulic oil and, and fill it up to level. So that's that's the hydraulic the, and the hydrostatic system uh, flush and filter change. So that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions on that, let me know. And again, 
as always that's not the only way to do it that's just how i did it thanks for watching